buwan-buwan po, nakakatanggap po kayo ng uh, 50,000 uh, at sinasabi po niya si Assistant Secretary Sunshine Fajarda. Sabi po ninyo sa kanya, itong envelope na to ay galing po from the Office of Vice President Sara Duterte o galing kay BP. And you will agree with me if I would say na you consider it difficult because it concerns matter about procurement and bidding. Yes. Where there are a lot of issues surrounding sometimes. And it's just issues about many. bribery and corruption. You agree with me? And you did not open the envelope because you feel so uncomfortable. Do you confirm? Yes. And then recently you made mention that uh, it was only once that I had this case with the Ombudsman. Do you confirm? Yes, ma'am. And you also made mention that you wish to protect yourself. Do you confirm? Yes. You, you, and the reason, ma'am, is because you believe that that envelope is a bribe. The chair would like to call on uh, Yusek Gloria Humamil Mercado. Yes. Uh, nakaupo na po ba yung mga resource person natin sa DepEd? Now, before we start the interpolation, um, maybe we, we can ask the ComSec to administer the oath to, to Yusek. Mercado, use Comsec. Uh, Ms. Gloria Mamil Mercado, please stand up and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this committee? I will. So to help you, God. Thank you, Your Honor. The oath has been administered. Okay, I understand, ma'am, you said that uh, you have a uh, statement. Meron po kayong... Uh, statement na sasabihin you are now uh, recognized thank you mr chair um before i start i just want to say that um this is a very difficult thing to do and i apologize to my children who didn't like me to join this um this session and also my colleagues who are my friends, but I have to read my statement. My name is Gloria Humamil Mercado, and I have a dedicated over, I have dedicated over 40 years to public service in the government of the Philippines. In my last year with government, I served as the Undersecretary for Human Resource and Organizational Development of the Department of Education. I was appointed as DepEd Undersecretary by President Marcos, as recommended by Vice President Sara Semerman Duterte in 2022, and I assumed office in August of 2022 in February 2022. In February 2023, I was designated as the head of the procuring entity of DepEd. As one of the signatories of DepEd's checking, checking account, alongside Undersecretary for Finance, uh, Annalyn Sevilla, I signed checks related to, the, related to all funds and recall that each one, one, some of the checks that I signed amounted to 37 million 500,000 pesos. Between February 2023 to September 2023, I received a total of nine envelopes labeled HOPE, my concurrent position in DepEd during that time. These envelopes were handed to me mostly by Assistant Secretary Sunshine Fajarda, which she, can, she says came directly from Vice President Duterte. What, what she would typically say as she hands the envelope, it would appear that I received this envelope by virtue of my office as HOPE. Uh, Attorney Fajarda is the wife of Edward Fajarda, who is the Special Disbursement Officer. Although the exact date evades recollection, sometimes during the course of my tenure with DepEd, 
A member of my staff informed me that an inquiry was made by one of our officers in the field that there, Mr. Farda had made inquiries about the bank accounts of several individuals and if, and if divulging such information to him was permitted. My office confirmed that it was upon the instruction of the office of the secretary. Evidently, it would appear that regional directors and other employees on the field would also receive sums on top of the regular salaries. Sometimes in October 2023, as the likelihood of a bidding failure for debt computerization have become apparent, I was approached, sorry, by attorney Munsayak, and he suggested in the presence of other officials who, who was with me that the bidder should, the, should just discuss among themselves. Mag-usap-usap na lang para hindi masayang yung pera ng 2023. I firmly asserted that the procurement must be implemented and conducted in strict adherence with the rules. Sometimes on the third or fourth week of October, I was summoned by Sulaika Lopez, the Chief of Staff of the Vice President and Under Secretary of OVP. I was informed that I should tender my resignation effective that day. I refused to resign and I insisted on departing from service through voluntary retirement. The timing of my meeting with Ms. Sulaika struck me as more than coincidental. It gave me the impression that my candid responses was the reason, re, real reason behind the push to relieve me of my office. It was as if I had become an unwelcome obstacle, despite simply doing my job as Hope and Undersecretary of Human Resource of DepEd. Prior to my meeting with Ms. Sulaika, there were other undersecretaries and assistant secretaries who were summoned also, and uh, were also summoned all of the same purpose of informing them, informing them that they should tender their resignation effective on the same day. I signed my affidavit. Can we request for the copy of the affidavit, Mr. Chair? Um, Comsec, could you please uh, get our, yes. Pwede po ba makahingi kami ng affidavit? Thank you po, ma'am, uh, sa inyong uh, statement. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, uh, Congressman we... Dan Fernandez. Uh, with, uh, the, with the indulgence of Congresswoman uh, Jingi Luistro. Uh, yeah, we, we don't have a copy yet of the uh, affidavit, but uh, I heard the name of uh, Attorney Munsayak. And a while ago, uh, Congressman uh, Chairman Karaps mentioned uh, his name as the former uh, uh, official of the OBP. Can we uh, invite also... If, Attorney yeah, Munsayak, yeah, yeah. could you please... Uh, Can we invite him his... over? Uh, because your name was uh, mentioned in the uh, affidavit of... Uh, Miss Anna, Miss, uh, what, what's your name, ma'am? Mr. Chair, I'm Dr. Mercado. Dr. Mercado, your name is Gloria. Yes. Gloria Mercado. Uh, okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, may, may I request the Comsec to please reproduce the if affidavit of uh, Yusek Mercado Mr. and Chair. furnish all the members of the committee with a copy. Yes, Congress, um, Congressman uh, Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Chair, in the same line of the administrative matter raised by Honorable Fernandez, I believe uh, another USEC is here also present with us, the Attorney Poa, and he was also mentioned in the affidavit. Perhaps we may ask him to join us here in the... Uh, yes, Attorney Poa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you are invited. Please take a seat. Comsec. Pupwedeng paki-assist po si... Attorney. Ay. Sir, siguro pwedeng hiwalay po kayo. Baka magkalabitan po kayo. Pwede, baka pwede po maghiwalay po kayo para at least eh, para may iwasan po natin yung lambingan dito. Paghiwalay na lang po natin. 
Yes. Uh, pwede pong, sir, po, pwede pong atras, hindi, hindi, hindi. Doon din po si, si Monsayak. Pakiatras, hindi. At, atras na lang po yung mga dito. Siguro sa gitna na lang po si Attorney Monsayak. Pwede po bang makipagpalit sa gitna? Mr. Chair, while we're uh, attending to um, the arrangements and physical arrangements of the committee, I can I request for a five-minute suspension. Five-minute suspension is declared by the Chair. Um, our first interpolator would be Congressman Dan Fernandez. Congressman. Um, Mr. Chairman, this is a uh, brief lang po, no? As I read the uh, apidabit, medyo mawibigat po itong mga accusations that uh, was mentioned by uh, Miss Gloria Jumamil Mercado. But while we are in break, I tried trying to call my uh, mga contacts about this person, si uh, Gloria Jumamil Mercado. Uh, if I may be allowed to uh, just uh, establish some um, uh, qualifications that uh, you have. Uh, just answer us uh, truthfully, uh, Ms. Gloria Jumamil Mercado. Um, ano po ba ang pinagmulan po ninyo? Uh, you are in the public service for 40 years, but uh, ano po yung mga foundation that you can relay to this committee as your uh, established person uh, personality? Uh, thank you, Chair, for that question. Yes, you said um, uh, Mercado, you are recognized. I was, uh, I, as I mentioned, I w I'm already 40 years in government. I, s I was pulled out from my 40 year college. I was 19 years old when I worked with, Senate, with then Minister Vicente Paterno as Masikap. Uh, I think one of the famous Masikap here is also uh, Congressman, um, fr uh, Congressman from Cagayan de Oro. Um, so I, I started working in Mindanao as a field worker, and I rose the rank up to an assistant secretary, on uh, mostly on merit. And then I had my PhD in mainland China studies. So when I got back, I was asked by Sec Secretary Bert Gonzalez to join him in the National Security Council, and that's where I was totally grounded on social democracy. And, uh, and being able to work well with uh, the countryside and the other sectors. So in other words, Mr. Chairman, your uh, foundation of your uh, having uh, served uh, for 40 years in the public service is uh, social democrats. Yes, po, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, kasi yung pong mga social democrats, yung pong uh, equality, you know, like Sweden, Norway, and the different uh, part of this world uh, adhere to this uh, social democracy, which establishes a fairness and... Um, equal rights for every uh, citizen of their, uh, their country. And uh, I, I heard that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Madam uh, Gloria, uh, were you tap on the uh, Yolanda rehabilitation on the capacity building of the LG, the different LGUs by uh, former Senator uh, Ping Lacson? Yes, po, sir. Bakit po kayo tinap ni uh, Senator Ping Lacson? What is your, uh, your uh, credibility and your, uh, your capacity to uh, lead Yung sa Yolanda rehabilitation. I I was wear, I was actually wearing two hats, uh, Mr. Chair. The first one is I was the commander of the Naval Forces Reserve, Eastern Visayas. I'm a commodore po of the Philippine Navy Reserve. Ah, so reservist po kayo ng ano? Yes, ng po, Navy? sir. Yes, sir. And second is that I was the senior vice president and dean of the Development Academy of the Philippines. And we were asked by Senator Ping Lakson of then Presidential Advisor for the Yolanda Rehabilitation to develop a course for all the, for the 179 municipalities and towns that were affected by the, which we call the Yolanda Corridor. So we customized a program for them and uh, they didn't come up with a thesis, it's a master's degree. What they, come, what they came out, each of the planner will come out with a new town plan that is on a build better uh, framework. So, in other words, um, uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Mr. Chair pala, and Madam Gloria, uh, yung buong trabaho po ninyo, para, to, para maintindihan po ng in a layman's term, no? yung naging trabaho nyo as uh, 
uh, senior vice president po ba kayo ng uh, Development Academy of the Philippines? Yes po. Uh, if I may, no, uh, ito po bang trabaho niyo dito, kung ilalagay po natin para mas maintindihan natin, kayo po yung nagtatrain para dun sa mga career executive. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. So in other words, your capacity as uh, one of the uh, pillars of the Development uh, Academy of the Philippines is to to uh, give uh, ammunition to those uh, affected on sa sa Yolanda uh, tragedy. Yes, is that Mr. correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, were you also a um, a uh, pioneer nung tinatawag nating uh, sa development security program for the command and general staff ng college ng uh, armed forces of the Philippines? Yes, Mr. Were you a Chair. part of it? Um, kasi as, as also a reservist po, I realized that yung nag-aaral sa Kamana General Staff College, they only get a certificate of a Kamana General, General Staff course. So naisip namin sa DAP is to twin a program. We expanded the training so that pag-graduate nila sa Kamana General Staff College, hindi lamang sila certified of the Kamana General Staff course. Meron din silang... Uh, Masters in Public Management, Major in Development and Security. Ang tinuturo po namin, um, uh, Mr. Chair, is for the armed forces to be able to work properly in the ground, especially with the NGOs and the local government units. Okay. Uh, aside from that, somebody texted me as well. They saw you on, uh, on, uh, on the live stream of the uh, House of Representatives. And they're uh, telling us, telling me, that you are a senior fellow of the... Uh, Philippine Public Safety College, wherein I'm going to graduate on Friday. Yes, sir. Uh, are you a dean of the uh, PPSC? No, sir. We develop, we help develop the program. So I chair the advisory committee. So you created the uh, the program that we are uh, uh, that yes, we're yes, being sir. taught to us. Yes, Mr. Chair. Because one year na po akong nagmamasteral sa PPSC, safety. sa public safety, and uh, I'm uh, quite. Um, uh, ano, surprise that you are a former senior fellow of the uh, PPSC. And with that, Mr. Chairman, no, uh, I, um, I uh, was quite uh, surprised to find out that... Um, no, 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 actually, I'm not surprised anymore. A while ago, when uh, you, I was uh, hearing your testimony on your affidavit, medyo nagiging questionable pa sa akin yung mga dineklara nyo dito. But now that I found out all of this qualification that was um, uh, given to me by uh, my friend who have watched you testifying on this committee, now I must agree that uh, you really have a ball. No? Ma 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 ano kayo talaga? Uh, you were established on your foundation on the true public service that are being given by, uh, by you. And uh, with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I will not be furthering my uh, uh, my query anymore because I believe that this uh, person who will be testifying to us have this uh, high credibility. Maraming salamat to, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I will I will be the next next interpolator. Um, Ma'am, kanina po binanggit po ninyo dito na sa inyong affidavit, Ito po ba yung affidavit na binabanggit po ninyo, na pirmado po ninyo? Dated uh, 25th of September 2024? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Ito po yung pirma ninyo na nakalagay po sa taas ng Gloria Humamil Mercado. Pirma po ba ninyo ito? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, alam naman po ninyo. At ito po yung under oath. So, yes, ibig Mr. sabihin Chair. po nito, at kanina rin po kayo po ay nag-take ng oath. So, lahat po ng uh, sasabihin ninyo po dito ay dapat uh, pawang katotohanan lamang. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Kanina po binanggit po ninyo dito na kayo po ay... Uh... Ay, by the way, ano po yung inyong educational background? Pwede po ba malaman namin? Uh, I have a bachelor's in, ed in economics and a master's in national security administration. National Security Administration. And a PhD po in Chinese Studies. And PhD? In Chinese Studies. Chinese Studies, okay. Sabi po ninyo dito kanina, ay, sa inyong uh, number two affidavit, I was appointed as DepEd Undersecretary by President Ferdinand Romualdez as recommended by Vice President 
Zara Zimmerman Duterte in 2022. Bakit po si... Paano po ninyo nakilala si BP Zara? At bakit kayo po ang napili niya na irekomenda bilang undersecretary ng DepEd? Um, thank you, sir. Thank you, you Chair. Um, we actually went through a selection process. There was an advertisement by the CES board that uh, the Department of Education is um, going to recruit under secretaries, assistant secretaries. So we saw that ad. <clears throat> I was currently working with the Office of the Presidential Advisor for streamlining government processes. And um, so we applied, we were interviewed, and then we received a communication that we passed the interview and the process, the selection process, and that we are to assume at a specific date. Okay. So, ibig sabihin po, prior to your appointment as undersecretary, hindi pa po nyo kilala si Vice President Sara um, Duterte. Tama po ba? Kilala naman po. Ah, kilala na po ninyo. Kasi she studied at the Development Academy of the Philippines where okay. I was the the dean and the senior vice president. She was our graduate student. So, din po kayo sa DAP? Yes po, sir. Ano ah, pong, ano pong, uh, ano pong uh, course ang kusang po kayo din? Sir, it's it's just one. Ah, isa, so, yung buong DAP kayo po yung ano? Yes, sir. Okay, Development it's Academy. It's the Graduate po ba? School of Public and Development Management. Okay. So, dito po ninyo nakilala si VP, Sarah? Yes po. Yes, Your Honor. And okay. I was actually her advice advisor of her thesis for her master's degree. Okay. So, so yung recommendation po niya, kayo po ay naging uh, undersecretary for Human Resources and Organizational Development. Tama po ba? Yes, uh, yes Chair. Okay. So, ilan po ba ang USEC ng DepEd? We were nine po. Siyam po. Ano-ano po yung mga USEC na to? Uh, USEC for Finance, Admin, Finance. Uh, Infrastructure, Infrastructure. Infra? Huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, we were admin finance, uh, curriculum, human resource, and organizational development. An pakilakas ang po? Pakilakas. Human resource and organizational development, operations, uh, planning, pro procurement, and, and uh, procurement. the chief of staff. Kasa and may use for procurement po. Um, sir, the USEC for procurement was a product of, an, of uh, uh, an organizational review which we did when we came into DAP, uh, into DepEd. Okay. So, as uh, USEC for human resource, resources and organizational development, kayo rin po ay na-designate as head ng procure, procuring entity. Only in 2023, sir. February 2023. So, dalawa po yung function ninyo. Usek po kayo ng uh, human resources and at the same time, kayo rin po ang head ng procuring entity. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Bakit hindi po yung Usek for procurement ang head ng procuring entity or ng HOPE? Bakit po yung sa human resources po? Kayo po, yung opisina po ninyo, ang pagkakaalam ko sa human resources, kayo po yung sa mga recruitment ng tao, tama po ba? Y uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Yung po yung trabaho ninyo, tama po ang ba? Ang trabaho ko po, Mr. Chair, is human resource, then I, I have the National Educators Academy of the Philippines, and uh, Teachers Excellence Council. Tama po. There's so, 1.1 so million. So in short po, in short po, uh, yung trabaho ninyo has nothing to do with procurement. Yes. Okay. yes Mr. So, ang tanong ko po, bakit po kayo ang naging head ng procuring entity? Bakit kayo po ang napili? I think it's a, it's a trust. It's a trust. And so, kasi pwede naman yung finance, pwede naman po yung admin. Tama po ba? Okay. So, it's a trust. Okay. Thank you po. 
So kanina po, binanggit po ninyo dito sa inyong uh, paragraph 3 ng affidavit ninyo, sabi nyo, as one of the signatories of DepEd checking account, alongside USEC, Annalyn Sevilla, I signed check related to the department's confidential fund. And recall that each one amounted to 37 million 500,000. So ito pong uh, 37 million 500,000. Ilang beses po kayong nagpirma ng cheque in connection dito sa 37,000. Ilang 37,000 37 million 500,000 pong cheque ang napirmahan po ninyo. Habang hope po kayo. Um Mr. Chair, I'm not very sure if it's two or three. Okay. It, it should be around that. Two or three. So more or less, mga nasa 54 million ang napirmahan po ninyo. Tama po? Yeah, but separate checks. Apo, dalawang check na worth 30, uh, 37 times 74. 74. Seven, apo. Now, the sabi po ninyo sa paragraph 4, between February 2023 to September 2023, I received a total of nine envelopes labeled HOPE. My current position in DepEd during that time. Concurrent. Ano po? Tama po ba? Concurrent position. Yes. So tama po ba itong sinabi ninyo? Yes, okay. Mr. Ano Chair. po yung laman na itong siyam na envelope na to? It's uh, 50,000 pesos. 50,000. So, 50,000 times 9. So, for 9 months, ilang buwan po kayong naging uh, hope? 9 months? May I, may I explain that? Uh, yes, please. I've, I've been receiving that envelope, but I never opened it while I was at DepEd. Okay. Uh, the... the I, some of my friends, when I left, we saw that em those envelopes still intact, not opened. So I actually didn't know how much money there was in each of the envelopes. But how did you know na pera uh, po ang When laman. I retired already, I was asking for an exit call so I could You're, You were asking for? For an exit call when I was uh, leaving already DepEd because I wanted to return those uh, envelopes. Okay. But I wasn't able to to have that exit call. I wasn't able to return. But so I sought some advice and they just advised me to donate it to a, to a, a non-government organization, which I did. And that's the only time that I opened those envelopes in front of the people that I was donating it. And it was 50,000 per envelope. So 50,000 times nine. It's 450 po. And 450. They issued me a receipt for that 450. Okay. Sino po nag-issue ng receipt? Yung the one who, it's, it's an, the one it's an NGO that okay. I donated so the Okay. So yung pinag-donate po ninyo. Yes, Do you have that receipt? Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. Can yes, we have Mr. a copy Chair. of the receipt, ma'am? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you po. Uh, so, buwan-buwan po, nakakatanggap po kayo ng uh, 50,000. Uh, at sinasabi po nitong si Assistant Secretary Sunshine Faharda. Sabi po ninyo sa kanya, itong envelope na to ay galing po from the Office of Vice President Sara Duterte o galing kay BP. So, ano po ba ang trabaho nito ni Assistant Secretary Sunshine Faharda? Uh, he, she used to be the Head Executive Assistant. Hey, and yeah. then, yes, and then she became an assistant secretary. Okay. At ang asawa po niya, sabi po ninyo dito, si Edward Faharda, siya naman po ang special disbursement officer. Tama po ba? Yes. Okay. So, ibig sabihin po, itong mag-asawa po, si Sunshine Faharda at si Edward Faharda ay very close po talaga sa vice president. Tama po ba? Masasabi I, po ba ninyo na very close sila? I, I couldn't say that po. Pero the fact na si Sunshine Faharda ay heya, so siya po yung laging kasama. Tama po ba? 
if if you're the heya, you're usually the one who has trust and confidence from the Yes, president. trust and confidence. So, ang, ano po ba yung mga trabaho kadalasan ng heya? It's really doing the... Parang chief of staff din po yes. yan eh. Tama po ba? So, pag uh, dumating na si heya at uh, may sinabi pong instruction sa inyo, parang ang kausap na rin po ninyo, yung boss. Tama po ba? Yes, so, Mr. Okay. Chair. So, ito po bang... Uh, So, tuwing nagpupunta po siya sa inyo, sabi ninyo, nine, nine months, sunod-sunod, nagbibigay po siya ng envelope na may lamang pong 50,000. Tuwing nagpupunta po siya sa inyo, sinasabi po niya, galing kay VP. Tama po ba? Kami po yung umaakyat sa ah, umaakyat kayo. office of the secretary. Saan po kayo umaakyat? Sa office po? Sa office of the secretary. Kasi that's sa, where she holds office. Sa office ni Assistant Secretary Fajarda. Yes. Okay. Yes, Chair. By the way, ito po bang opisina po niya? Gano'n po ito kalayo, kalayo sa opisina ni uh, BP Sara? The same... The same, same office. Man. So, ibig sabihin, isang opisina lang po silang dalawa. Okay. Pero kasi normally po, yung USEC ang nagpapatawag ng ASEC eh. Tama po ba? Tama po ba? Kasi mas mataas po yung USEC kaysa sa ASEC eh. But this time... Yung ASEC po ang nagpapatawag sa USEC. Tama po ba? Yes, Chair. Okay. So, yun po eh hindi naman normal kasi normally talaga yung ang boss ng ASEC yung USEC. Tama po ba? Okay. So, the fact na kayo po ay pinatatawag ng ASEC, eh ibig sabihin po talaga, eh talagang uh, very close at uh, talagang parang uh, very close siya sa secretary. Tama po ba? Parang alter ego po siya. Okay. Yung, describe nyo nga yung opisina ng uh, Office of the Vice President at saka ito pong opisina ni Assistant Secretary Sunshine Fajarda. Ano po ba yan? Isang, kunyari, halimbawa, ito po, isang opisina to. Meron lang po ba siya doon table o meron din siyang sariling opisina doon? May sarili siyang... May sariling opisina. So, para siyang chief of staff doon. Okay, pero lahat yan under ng Office of the Secretary. Kasi normally po, ang mga may opisina lang po doon, USEC, tama po ba? Uh, may, ang mga USEC po, may kanya-kanyang opisina, tama po ba? Sa baba po. Sa baba. Eh, yung mga ASEC po, may mga opisina rin po ba? Yes, Your Honor. Saan yes, po? Um, Sa baba rin. Naka-scattered kasi madami. Naka-scattered. So, ibig sabihin, on top doon sa opisina niya as ASEC, meron din siyang opisina sa loob ng opisina ng secretary as heya. And uh, no po, chair. Ah, wala. Yun lang yung office niya. Ayun ah, lang ang office uh -oh. niya. So ibig Kasama sabihin talaga din niya yung USEC, ay uh, yung chief of staff. Okay. Ang nag-o-office doon, chief of staff at saka yung ASEC. Doon sa loob ng opisina yes. ng secretary. And the, the, okay. Yes. So yun lang po. Uh, salamat po. Yes, uh, with the indulgence of uh, Congresswoman Luistro, the chair would like to recognize Congressman J. Kunghun. In connection lang po, ma'am, doon sa tanong ni chair, tanong ko lang po, ma'am, nung naramdaman niyo po na inaabot at inaab may nag-aabot po sa inyo na sobre, buwan-buwan, ano po ang pakiramdam niyo? Bakit hindi niyo po binuksan? I, I must admit that I was uncomfortable with, the, with those envelopes, but Parang ang hirap din, kasi I'm not sure if others are receiving. Parang ang hirap din mag, ano, na, I was, I was, I didn't know if others are receiving. I cannot say. So, um, ang ginawa ko na lang is, uh, I had this pouch that iniiwan ko lang sa office. Nilalagay ko lang doon yung mga binibigay sa akin na pera. Na sa pakiramdam po ninyo, para po saan yun? Ako ang, ang feeling ko is she has naman resources to to give to to she, I mean she has probably personal resources that she can share to to her people and uh, I'm not I'm not really ayoko mag speculate but the only thing I could say is uh, I wasn't comfortable with it. 
Hindi po ba kayo nagtataka? Kayo po yung head ng HOPE, ng procure, procuring entity. Tapos may natatanggap po kayo na buwan ng 50,000? Um, as I mentioned, it is uncomfortable and that's precisely the reason why I wasn't opening it at all. I was just putting it in one pouch. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Chair, I would like to recognize Congresswoman Luis Toro. Thank you. My question is addressed to Ma'am Mercado. Ma'am, do you confirm when you were still in DepEd, you were occupying concurrently USEC for HR and HOPE? Yes. Sabay po yun. When were you appointed as Undersecretary for Human Resources and Organizational Development? Uh, we were all appointed together by the President uh, July, but I only assume... Can you please state that the year? July 2022 po. Okay. But I only assumed office in August 15, 2022 because I was still uh, winding up my work with another office. So you would agree with me if I say that you were appointed as USEC for HR July 22, but you assumed the position August 15, 2022? Yes, um, With Mr. respect Chair. to your appointment as head of procuring entity, kailan po kayo na-appoint? That's February 2023. February 2023. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to your appointment as USEC for HR. From August 15, 2022, kayo po ba ay pinaaakyat din ni ASEC Sunshine to receive this envelope which you refused to open? Um, not on 2020. I don't recall 2022. Um, we, we have simple we have gifts on December but I don't recall a monthly thing before that. In other words, from August 15, 2022, that is the date of your appointment as USEC for HR. Until before February 2023, which is your appointment as head of procuring entity, you are not receiving any envelope from ASIC Sunshine. No. And you will confirm that this envelope started only when you were appointed as head of procuring entity? Um, it's, it's actually not very clear to me anymore, but I recall we also received some amounts in, uh, in 2022, but it's very vague to me anymore. So, and then I don't have the envelope. So, Parang, parang it wasn't so how do you receive those amounts which are vague, not regular, if there are no envelopes? No, um, I think it's only once. It's like a Christmas uh, bonus. Pero siguro hindi siya naka-envelope kasi I didn't keep it. Tama po bang sabihin, ma'am, na yun pong regular monthly envelope which you later on found out contains 50000 per envelope? ay nag-umpisa lamang nung kayo na-appoint as head of procuring entity? Um, as far, I, I'm still keeping those envelopes, so I would like to say yes. Yes, because it is very clear from your affidavit, no? This envelope started in February and ended in September of 2023. And earlier, you said, kayo po'y na-appoint bilang HOPE noong February 2023. And prior to that, since your appointment in August 15, 2022, wala kayong nare-recall regular envelope which you, are, you were receiving from ASEC Sunshine. Can you please enlighten us? What is with HOPE? Bakit doon lang po nag-umpisa itong envelope na ito? Upon your appointment as head of procuring entity, it's a it's a very difficult task, especially for someone who has not tried to be one before. Parang it's an area that I really evaded all my entire government life, um, but I needed 
there's just too much, too many already pending procurement at that time. So when I was asked if I could be designated as the hope, uh, I, I first referred them to other people who are seasoned in procurement, like Sina Yusik Rebsi, but Yusik Rebsi was already too preoccupied with operations. So I finally accepted the position, and it was difficult because I have to study the procurement law. And I had, I was given, um, I had a, a, a lawyer and someone who has been who's only a retiree to review the documents with me when we signed the contracts. And I had commitment from, when I accepted the post, I made it a family decision, you know. Like, among the Execom, I asked um, our legal, our legal before, uh, Yusek Brady, Brady and Asik Amanda Nograles, that everything that I signed has to be thoroughly reviewed by legal. And so we, I had that commitment of support from everyone in the Execom, and so I accepted the post. In brief, ma'am, can you please enlighten us? Why do you say na mahirap, difficult, ang position ng HOPE? Because you have to read through all the, you have to look through all the documents, and it's like Which documents, ma'am? Everything that goes through the bidding process. Um, I, I am not part of the bidding process itself, but I, on, on the time that I was appointed, I was the one tasked to form the structure of the, who's chair for back one, back two. So I spoke to all the people which I know I will have comfort to chair specific committees, a specific back. But the process of bidding, I'm not part of it because you have to maintain your, your, your you, you have to make sure that you're not enmeshed with the, the process itself, but you're just reviewing to make sure that the, the, the vice president secretary is protected with everything that I signed because it's a delegated function. She's in other supposed, words, she's supposed to be the hope. In other words, ma'am, you're the person who check all the documents coming from back before the vice president signs or approves. No, I signed because you I'm, sign for the. I have to sign because I'm the one. The hope signs. It's delegated to me already. And you will agree with me if I would say na you consider it difficult because it concerns matter about procurement and bidding yes where there are a lot of issues surrounding sometimes and it's just issues about many. bribery and corruption you agree with me yes you're and what do you think is the reason kung bakit yung envelope nag start lang during your appointment as hope um bakit po walang envelope nung hr pa lang kayo tapos biglang nagki-envelope nung naging hope kayo I think it's uh, it's like an allowance maybe for an extra work because sometimes I have to stay until midnight to to look at the documents when uh, sometimes ma there's I have if one. that is just an allowance, ma'am, then the rest of the officials of the DepEd should be receiving also their respective envelopes. Do you think so? Don't you think so, ma'am? If that is just an allowance then the rest of the officers of DepEd should have their own envelopes as well. Mr. Chair, that's precisely the reason why I did not open any of it. Because I understand. Because that was very uncomfortable. On I understand. Part. And that leads me to the next question, ma'am. Why were you so uncomfortable with the envelope when you believe that that is just an allowance? Because, ma'am, I'm 40 years, uh, you're, um, Mr. Chair, I'm 40 years in government. The only time I have an ombudsman case is when I, when I advise my principal not to sign an importation. I, when I was the deputy cabinet secretary, and I advised my principal not to sign uh, 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 an importation because there was no rice crisis. That's my only ombudsman. I have to protect that name. Um, I self-made po kami. I come from Samar. I. I was a scholar since I was grade one until I took my PhD. So I have all reasons to protect my name, Your Honor. Um, and it's, I'm in the home stretch of my career. And then I'm being thrown into that position, which I have no control because I'm only studying it. 
So that's that's my. Uh, Mom, I wish to remind you of the terminologies which you mentioned already. With all due respect, po sa inyo, no. Because I want to elicit this information from you. Kanina po sabi nyo, the position, the job of hope is very difficult. Do you confirm? Yes. Yes. And you did not open the envelope because you feel so uncomfortable. Do you confirm? Yes. And then recently you made mention that uh, it was only once that I had this case with the ombudsman. Do you confirm? Yes, ma'am. And you also made mention that you wish to protect yourself. Do you confirm? Yes. You, you, and the reason, ma'am, is because you believe that that envelope is a bribe. Do you agree with me? Um, because I'm, otherwise, you will not appreciate the job as difficult. You will not uncomfortable opening what you believe is allowance. You will not be thinking about the ombudsman case. You will not be thinking about protecting yourself. The reason why you are considering all these concerns is because you believe that the envelope is a bribe. Do you agree? Yes or no, ma'am? Um, it's kind of harsh word to use. Uh, bribe. Because if... Or should I say oh, uh, it is a means to influence your decision being the hope? Um, it could be. You said yes to that? You said it could be. Could be. I wish to manifest, Mr. Chair, that uh, on the story, on the narration of the resource speaker about this envelope, she received and she refused to open until the same is donated from February 2023 to September 2023 is a means actually to influence the decision of our resource speaker being the one who approved all the decision of the BAC in behalf of the DepEd secretary. Tama po ba, ma'am? Um, there was only one instance that I could recall na, ano, but there was no one spoke to me about um, well there were there was an instance where i have i i tried to let a bidding lapse but um but uh i uh, i ended up signing it because um because there was a I, there was a protest I'm, I'm not comfortable discussing it. But I wish to state for the record, Mr. Chair, that with the narration of our resource speaker, she earlier manifested that she believes that those envelopes are means to influence her decision as hope. Ma'am, I wish to invite your attention to paragraph 6. You mentioned in this paragraph that a certain attorney, Reynold Monsayak, suggested in the presence of three DepEd officials um, na pag-usapan na lang ang 2022 budget para hindi masayang. However, you firmly asserted the procurement that the procurement must be implemented and conducted in strict adherence with the rules. Do you confirm yes. this? Yes. Can you please enlighten us? Sino po yung ibang DepEd officials present actually, during this incident? Actually, it was one director and two consultants. Can uh, you please state the names? Um, uh, the, the director was Director Resti Osias, and the, the consultants was uh, Juna Soriano and... Um, and um, Ferdinand, uh, Ferdinand, forgot the family name. Where, where did this meeting happen, ma'am? Kanino pong opisina nangyari to? It was not in DepEd. I was having lunch. There was a training ongoing in one hotel. I don't recall anymore whether it's Linden or Discovery Suites. 
uh, but it's just in Ortigas area. And I was having lunch with these people, and we were discussing a project. Um, and then uh, that's when uh, I was approached. Does that project have something to do with the 2022 continuing no, no, no. fund? No, it was, it was different. It was different. Yeah. But that lunch was shared with these three other DepEd officials along with Attorney Monsayak. No, I, Attorney Monsayak was not part of the lunch. Uh, I think he was, he probably came, down, came out from, from the training and then um, that's when he joined us. He joined you and then to whom did he direct what he said? Na pag usapan na lang natin yung 2022 para hindi masayang. Kanino po ba niya sinasabi ito sa inyo o dun sa tatlong DepEd officials pa? Uh, it could be to me and the director because director Resti was also a member of the BAC. How about the two others? Are they members of no, the BAC also? No, they're not because the consultants were we were discussing a uh, uh, DepEd Guru program, it's an app that we're, we were discussing. And uh, can you enlighten us? Ano po bang naging reaction nung kasama nating director? Her name is Director? Osias. Osias. Well, I think his reaction was that uh, parang, but niya sinabi yun eh, we're not, may other, other people there. I see. Because those two other consultants are not part of yes. the BAC. Yes. And did, did she accede to what Attorney Monsayak said? No. He's a very strict director as far as procurement. She did is. not accede. He. He did not accede. Yes. And kayo po, you asserted that the procurement must be implemented and conducted in accordance with the law. You said that. Yes, po. And Attorney Monsayak heard that. Yes, po. And after this incident, ma'am, what happened? Um, I left na. I left already. You left. But you recall that after some time, kayo po ay kinausap na ni Ms. Sulaika, ni Attorney Lopez, the Chief of Staff of Vice President Sarah. Please enlighten us. What happened during that conversation? Um, I, uh, parang a, a day mga afternoon I got a text uh, when I got the text um, it was a familiar text because these were the same text that is sent to those who are asked to leave as well so when I saw it I prepared na I prepared what I should tell them and tell her and I prepared that I'm not resigning but I'm retiring because I'm I'm, a, I'm already in a, at a age level where I could retire properly. And um, so I was, when I went there, I was, I knew what the issue would be because the, the kind of text that I received was the same text that was received by, by Chris Arnoco, ASEC Chris Arnoco. And uh, the Who others- Who is Chris Arnoco, ma'am? He's an ASEC also that was asked to resign. He was asked to resign for what reason, if you're aware? Um, no, I'm not aware. You are uh, not aware? I, I just get to know being an HR, and then I was there nanay nanayan in DepEd. So um, I, get, I get to, to be their sounding board and their apprehensions because they're young, they're young people, their career. So yun yung yun yung situation. And so when I arrived at uh, the OBP's office in Mandaluyong, um, sinabi na uh, there's this issue of a teacher that is in my office and some other issues. So kinat ko na lang si Yusik Solaika, sabi ko, um, in my 40 years in government, I knew that I work on trust. So if the principal doesn't trust me anymore, then you don't have to find reason for me to go. So I'm ready, I'm ready to, to resign, uh, to retire. Uh, here are the things that I need to do for retirement. I need to say goodbye properly to the, to the, to the institution that I serve well. For the record, ma'am, did you resign or did you retire? I'm being asked to resign, I did not. I retired. I you retired for retirement. So when did you retire? 
Uh, effective November 1. So that is one month no. from the supposed date no, when you're supposed to retire? No, they don't like one month. I was actually trying to ask for December 30, but uh, they wanted, in fact, they wanted it on that day that they spoke to me. This is fourth week of October when uh, Attorney Silueca talked third, to you. I'm not, I'm not very sure anymore. Third week of October. They want you to resign on that date? On that very day. On that very date. But you said... I'm not going to resign because I have to honor my 40 years in government, you know? What, what would I do after resigning? And how did you feel when oh. on the third week of October you're being asked to resign? I was so devastated because I was... I, I couldn't find a reason why I would have to go, you know. What were you thinking during that time? Can you please share with us your thoughts? Ano pong iniisip nyo during that time when after 40 years of being in DepEd, dedicating all your life and career in DepEd, suddenly there is Attorney Zulweka asking you to recite right then and there? Um, I was very sad. I spoke to... It wasn't a surprise, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, because there were six people before me that went through that process. So I wasn't surprised. So what I did the night before when I got the text, I already prepared myself. But I'm human, and I worked very well for the past year. So I was really very devastated with what they did to me. And uh, that's also the reason why I refused to initially to face this panel, because I said I'm so wounded as as a bureaucrat, so baka ma. So I, I just didn't. Siguro what was hurting is that when I left, they were trying to the. the marami kasing press that was running after me and asking why I, I left. So I, my children and I flew to Guam for three days just to evade the the press, which. Nandun na rin sila sa gate namin sa village. And um, I think what was hurting is that they were trying to justify my departure by saying that I was favoring certain uh, suppliers, which I told You don't my, believe that. I told my kids. You reject that. I told my kids, I, can, I left DepEd with my pride intact and with integrity because I have not favored any... I don't even speak to suppliers. If there are petitions or things that has to be settled at hope level, I go at the middle of DepEd where it's seen by everyone, and that's where I speak to the to the suppliers. Last question, ma'am. Sasang ayon po ba kayo if I would say na yung pagtanggi nyo kay Attorney Reynold Monsayak na pag-usapan na lang yung 2022 continuing fund ang dahilan kung bakit kayo pinagre-resign ni Attorney Solweka? That's very speculative, ma'am. Um, si from your point of view, ma'am, it can be right, it can be wrong, but from your point of view, it could be. It could be the reason. Dahil tumanggi kayo na pag-usapan ang 2022 continuing fund, posible na ito ang dahilan kung bakit kayo pinagre-resign ni Attorney Solweka. Thank you, ma'am. I submit, Mr. Chair.